So we have a lot of demos that we can do with light. Um, here's one, this is just a lens, and I have a little screen here, and I can, I can move this up, and I can focus. Uh, let's see if I can get this right there. There's a light that I'm focusing um, right over there. It's the light's right over there. So it's a um, classic example of light is a way we understand this. Uh, we even have things like this. Here is a laser pointer. You can see the little green dot. You see right there, it's not super bright, right there. And if I put this diffraction grating in front of it, then I get three dots. Again, we, we understand that. Okay. Now we have something like this. This is a little homemade electroscope I made. When it gets electrically charged, these things spread out. So let me charge this thing up. Uh, I'm gonna charge it up this way. I have a little, this is to make it easier. And I'm holding on to it to make it negatively charged. Okay, I think that's good enough. I know you do. And now here I have an ultraviolet light that is not one. And watch, watch this thing right here. Notice how it's decreasing slightly right here. Okay, this is the photoelectric effect. It's not the best version of it, but I can get a better one. This one's kind of harder to explain using light as a wave. So this idea, well, maybe light's not a wave. Maybe light's a particle. So what is it? Is light a wave or a particle? Or is it both? Or does it get to decide? That's what I want to talk about. Okay, so I have here some physics textbooks. Uh, let's just see what they say about the nature of light. Okay, so 1886, 1887, experiments, Maxwell's equations our wave theory of classical electromagnetic waves cool um, Hertz then we get down to photoelectric effect um, Planck's constant blah 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 in 1905 same year he published his theory of relativity Einstein explained that the photoelectric effect and correctly predicted the results of some new experiments Einstein said that ENM radiation itself is quantized the quantum of EM radiation, the smallest indivisible unit, is called the photon. So, the key to understanding the photoelectric effect, blah, blah, blah. Hmm, okay. So, it doesn't say what is it. The smallest indivisible unit called the photon. Okay. That's a physics book. This is an introductory astronomy book. Uh, according to wave model, blah, 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 electromagnetic wave or electromagnetic radiation. Okay. Um, the wave model of light works well to explain many phenomena, but it fails to explain some of the light's properties when it interacts with matter. In those circumstances, it makes more sense to use a model in which light is thought of as a stream of particles called photons. The photons are individual packets of energy moving through space in a straight line at the speed of light. It's another physics book. Um, we've seen in chapter 24 that light is an electromagnetic wave. However, we must discuss this surprising fact that visible light and other types of electromagnetic waves are composed of discrete particle-like entities called photons. Okay, so the question is, is light a wave or a particle? It depends on the experiment that you set up to test it. Uh, what do we tell students about light, whether it's a wave or a particle? What do you think about that? Whether, what, do you think light's a wave or a particle? I think you, it's easier to explain as a wave. I think it's definitely a wave. Okay. Um, I mean, when you talk about diffraction, when you talk about the spatial extent of it, when you talk about how it interacts with materials, because it's frequency dependent, uh, when you talk about the manner in which it, you know, interference affects, so it's easy to conceptualize it as a wave. I, I think you have to be a little bit careful. The light doesn't care. Light, light doesn't care about whether it's a wave or whether it's a particle. It's how we can explain its behavior. So I think, I love that. that. I think that a lot of it can be explained as a wave and in some cases you can explain the behavior as a particle 
but you have to be careful not to think that it's actually a particle, like a ball coming at you. Okay. And you're going to cut this so that I'm actually saying whatever you want me to be saying, right? You can put that on the floor. Or anywhere. That's right. So you can end up saying, hey, I think photons are dumb. And you will say, I think photons are okay. the greatest thing in the world. Okay, so, um, what's your name? My name is David Norwood. I'm an associate professor of physics at Southeastern Louisiana University. And you don't have to be formal. I should look at you. No, you, you look at me, whatever. Whatever makes you comfortable. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> so, is light a wave or particle? No, no, how about this? I know you think. It's a wave. Right, okay. So, at what point did you say, hey, this whole photon thing's bogus? Okay, so what's bogus is not the photon in and of itself. It's the way that you are taught the photon as an undergraduate in physics. Okay. So, I was taught what photons are, and here's what they are. They are infinitesimal particles that fly through space and sometimes act like waves and sometimes act like particles. Depends on their mood. No, I'm kidding. It depends on what you do, right? So the idea is if I measure something that depends on interference, then I'm asking if it's a wave and it says I'm a wave. If I ask it something about particle-like properties, and we can talk about what particle-like properties are, and then it tells you that. And the problem is this notion of infinitesimal particle, particles that fly through space like BBs and bounce off of things and act like particle, like BBs do, like classical particles do, then um, you have a lot of trouble if you learn that as an undergraduate and then you go and get a PhD using building and designing lasers and using them for transport measurements, then um, you, you wind up trying really hard to try to make this weird model work and it just doesn't work and you find out eventually that there's just no truth in it. it it's not a good way to think about how light and matter interact, or even what light is. And, and the, the, the big discussion, as far as I'm concerned, is not whether or not there is a quantum theory of radiation. There absolutely is, and everybody knows that. It's that it has the, the actual quantum theory of radiation just has nothing to do with what people are taught at the undergraduate level. If we're going to teach it, let's teach it in, in, in a way that's at least partly right. Okay, so now for a super quick and not complete overview of a ball in an infinite square well and what this has to do with the photoelectric effect. Okay, so suppose I have this ball moving back and forth between these walls and they're, we call them infinite potentials, meaning that if you move to the left of that, the potential is infinity and it cannot even penetrate that, not even a little bit. So if the size of this gets really small, then our classical mechanics doesn't work to describe this. Instead, we have to use quantum mechanics. And so quantum mechanics deals not with the trajectory of the ball, but it deals with the wave function. So the wave function is the symbol psi, capital psi. Uh, you can see it down here in the equation, uh, which is, that's the wave function, okay? And the wave function must satisfy the following equation, which we call Schrodinger's equation. So you've probably heard that before. Schrodinger's cat, Schrodinger's equation, that's all the same thing. Okay, so it's partial derivatives with time and space and all that cool stuff, and the V is the potential. So in the well, the potential is zero, and the outside the well, the potential is, infin you know, infinity. And the other important thing is the probability density. This is just the complex conjugate of the wave function, uh, and so you can get a something that will tell you the probability of finding the particle at different positions. Okay, so there is our infinite square well. I'm not going to solve the whole thing. So suppose you break that wave function psi into a space part, and this is a one dimension, a space part and a time part, then you can come up with the following solution, and I'm skipping a whole bunch of steps here, a whole bunch, okay? And I get this following expression for the wave function, and it's the sine n pi x over a, and the, and the exponential term with the time in there, and we have these uh, discrete energy values that have to have in order to have the boundaries at uh, x equals zero and x equal a be zero because it can't penetrate. So we get these quantized energy levels. And if you plotted the probability density as a function of time, you get this picture. That's an animation, okay? Because it's a stationary state. But since the exponential term has that i in there, time goes away when you find the complex conjugate and you get a stationary state. So if you put at any of these quantized energy levels, it just stays there, which is kind of cool and weird. Okay, but all of quantum mechanics is weird. Now, suppose 
I put in two energies, a superposition of energies, energy one and energy two. The wave, the probability density uh, will oscillate back and forth just like this. And the frequency of oscillation depends on, here you go, the change in energy, E2 minus E1 over H, where H is Planck's constant. This is that same thing. Most people say uh, E of a photon is H times the frequency. Okay, so that's that same expression. But this just says the frequency of oscillation is proportional to the energy change. Now, if I want to get something to change energy levels and I apply this frequency of perturbation, if I, if I jiggle the potential with that frequency, it can get it to change energy levels. Isn't that cool? And, and this is not this is not crazy photon stuff. This is your basic intro, you know, undergraduate level quantum mechanics. You can see this. The perturbation stuff is a little tougher, but but you can see this. And I'll include links to these simulations. I didn't make them uh, down below. So what's the what's the point here? What do we do about light? Um, I, I think one of the main things is I'm just going to keep flashing this on my face like that. Uh, I think one of the main things is that light's complicated. Uh, it's it's definitely not this stream of BBs get shot out of the light. I, and I think that's the biggest problem. Um, the way it's presented in textbooks, uh, it's it's really leads students to believe that. Uh, that it's either a wave or it's BBs. And it is never BBs. There's never little tiny particles that get shot out like that. Yes, light is complicated. Uh, there is a quantum theory of radiation. Um, the photoelectric effect is cool, but you don't need uh, this this photon idea in there. And and really, I think that might be the biggest thing. Um, why is the photoelectric effect in these introductory books? Is it cool? Yeah, it's cool. Is it historically significant? Yeah, it's pretty significant. Um, but I don't think it really leads to this broader idea that students need to understand about physics. I, I think it's more important to focus on the fundamental things. Um, in, in quantum mechanics, we can explain the photoelectric effect. So I think we just, you know, it, I think it also says, look, here's a textbook. Things get in there and they kind of get stuck in there. We kind of, why do, why do I know about the photoelectric, photoelectric effect? It's because it was in a textbook. And, and then that's why I teach it. I teach it the way it was. And then that kind of just kind of sticks in there. It's really weird. Uh, we really need to think about what we do. But that's true for everything, right? Uh, but in the end, I also like to think about Pluto. Is Pluto a planet or a dwarf planet? Who cares? Pluto's awesome. Okay. And I think the same thing is true with light. Light is awesome. And then we can do some really cool things. Okay. So, you know, this video is a little bit different than my other videos. I kind of uh, interviewed some people and made it a little bit longer and edited it, which I don't normally do. So if you liked it, let me know. I can make more like this. Um, yeah, it's good seeing you.